Okay, here we go. Day six. Um, so I have a couple of questions to answer for you guys that you'd put in the group. Um, I'm going to do that, but in the, we're on Wednesday, all day today, Wednesday, and I just want to check in with how the exercise is going, the is it worth it challenge, um, and see if you are asking yourself the question, being um, curious about the answers, uh, and a lot of you say it's going really well. Um, one of you made a really good point, which is that you've been kind of following the book and doing things for quite some time, but this Healthy for the Holiday series is helping you focus on one thing at a time. Um, and that is, you know, in all of my programs that I teach, it's one of the things that I teach about is that when we're creating change, when we're looking to change, um, we think that we can just kind of go read a book or follow a program and that will translate into changes in our lives. In reality, um, it's not really the way the brain works. And so having a plan for integration and how to integrate those changes and what to focus on and when um, and how to iterate when something is not working, but not give up the things that were working. So truly um, part of the process that I love so much is teaching people how to change along with what to change, right? Um, and so part of this Healthy for the Holiday series is set up so that you are, you're, you know what to focus on. So while I will present a lot of different concepts and tools and things, knowing what to focus on and knowing where to, to um, put your energy and intention, um, attention and intention is really important and it's really powerful. So um, that's part of what we're doing here. Um, the big question that I wanted to answer today comes from a couple of you who have essentially said, yep, I'm asking myself the question of, is it worth it? And I say, nope, it's not worth it. And then I eat it anyways. Uh, what's wrong with me, right? Is essentially what you're saying. Is there something wrong with me? Um, do I not really want this? Or um, am I not good at this? Am I doing something wrong? And the answer is no, there's nothing wrong with you. And um, it just means a couple of things. So whenever I hear somebody saying, yeah, I asked myself the question of, do I want it? Uh, and the answer was no, but then I went ahead and ate it anyways. That always, for me, triggers a couple of follow-up questions, or I should say follow-up teaching points. So one of them being your, well, I'll, let me start with this. Um, let me start with this concept. So I use the work of B.J. Fogg, who's a researcher out of Stanford, uh, and he wrote the book Tiny Habits. It came out in um, 2020, and I actually just did a Tiny Habits training for my group yesterday, um, and so all of this is really, really fresh in my mind. As a behavior scientist, B.J. Uh, teaches and talks about how we think that our all of our decisions are made from this conscious level, but truly um, they're a mixture of unconscious neural pathways and habitual behaviors and um, vectors that are pushing us above and below an action line. So the action line is the thing that says, I either do something or I don't do something. And there's all kinds of vectors pushing us above or below that action line. So if you remember anything from today, it would be this this equation, behavior equals motivation, ability, and prompt. Behavior equals motivation, ability, and prompt. In other words, no behavior happens without the combination of motivation, ability, and prompt. And that's the same for behaviors that do happen or don't happen, right? So no behavior happens without motivation, ability, and prompt. So, um, there is always a prompt for us to do a behavior, always. I'll give you an example. So um, like everybody goes to the bathroom, you know, let's say you have to go to the bathroom. The prompt is that feeling that, you know, that physical sensation that I need to go to the bathroom, right? Well, that, that behavior wouldn't happen without the ability and the motivation coming together at the same time. So let's say you have the prompt that you really have to go to the bathroom and you're stuck somewhere and there's nowhere to go and you're in a, you know, a, a crowd of a thousand people, right? That behavior of going to the bathroom isn't going to happen until there is the ability, motivation, and prompt that all come together, okay? 
So keeping that in mind, when um, when you say, I asked myself the question, do I want the candy? The answer was no, or is the candy worth it? The answer was no, and then I ate it anyways. Here's what's happening, is that your motivation for the candy was just a little bit higher, or maybe a lot higher, just a little bit higher than your um, answer, which is it's not worth it. So if your motivation is just a little bit higher, then it's going to push you above the action line because that combination of motivation, ability, and prompt is all coming together, which creates the behavior. And so when, when someone says, I am, um, you know, I know it's not worth it, but I'm doing it anyway. What I, the first question I ask is, okay, well, where is, where are things um, unraveling or what's the word I'm looking for? Where are things not coming together in that equation of motivation, ability, and prompt? And my guess is, is that you have the prompt to eat the candy, right? It's either right in front of you or you thought about it or whatever. I have the prompt to eat the candy. I have the ability to eat the candy because there it is in my cupboard. And my motivation to eat the candy is just a little bit higher than my, motiv my motivation not to, okay? So then we start to work with each of those pieces. And I work with my motivation, my ability, or my prompt. Um, so if it's not enough to get curious and just ask yourself, is it worth it? You say, no, it's not worth it. And you eat it anyway. So if it's not enough just to get curious, which means your motivation for the candy is significantly higher, then we start working on the other pieces of that behavior puzzle. And it becomes ability prompt and motivation. Working on the motivation is last, quite frankly, um, because that the reason why we work on motivation last is because motivation waxes and wanes. It goes up and down based on the day and the circumstances and who's around you and all this stuff. So it's best to work on prompt and ability. So if you are struggling with asking yourself if, if it's worth it, the answer is no and eating it anyways, then I go to the heavy hitters, which are ability and prompt. Um, make it harder, make the behavior harder to do. Ignore, remove, or um, what's the other one? Ignore, remove, or uh, replace the prompt, right? So can you, essentially, can you make this behavior harder to do? Because right now your motivation to eat it is so much higher. So we're gonna bring in the other tools and make it harder to do. Can you throw it away? Can you hide it? Can you put it somewhere else? Can you wrap it in bubble wrap six times so that in order to get to it, you have to you know, cut through this material? And you might say, well, that feels like I should be able to just tell myself no. Well, without getting too much into the science, and I do teach a lot about this. And so that's a conversation for another day. And side note, I plan on doing a behavior design and tiny habits training for all of you um, who want to join that much later in this process in December. It's not a, a failure of will. It is a quite, quite literally, it's neuroscience. You have this habitual pattern of behavior and the dopamine response is, that's going through in your brain, that's being released in your brain is um, habituated to the candy. And so we can change that habituation, but, and, and for some people just asking, if, getting curious about it and saying, is it worth it to me? No, it's not worth it to me. That's enough to do it. But if it's not, um, there's not, it's not a personal failing on your fault. There's nothing wrong with you, but we might need to bring in some other tools to change the habituation of that dopamine signaling. Okay. So um, that's when we use other tools to um, make the behavior harder to do or to remove, remove the prompt for the behavior. I hope that makes sense. I said there were two things that I think about. The other thing I think about is, and this goes more to sort of the motivation piece, is are you clear about who it is that you want to be in relation to food and why? So I always have people do this, who am I becoming exercise in all of my programs as well, because Getting clarity about if we're if it's muddy, if it's unclear about why we would not be eating the candy or who we want to be in relation to the candy or how we want to feel in relation to the candy. If it's unclear, then that tiny little motivating factor of, yeah, give me the candy and that dopamine signaling that because not to get too down another rabbit hole, but the the, the 
your dopamine neural pathway will light up when you think about candy. It's that combination combination um, of unnatural sugar that um, will light up that dopamine pathway in your brain and say, yeah, eat me. So we're always working with that dopamine signaling. That That is just a given. It's going to do that. Um, the way our modern food environment is set up, uh, our brain is going to get triggered by dopamine signaling. But we're trying to move beyond it. And so in order to move beyond it, it, it requires us to stay mindful and connected to this person that we want to be on the other side of it, which is and if we're unclear about that, if that's muddy or not clear, then we succumb to that dopamine signaling so much easier, right? Because I don't know why I'm doing this anyway, so I might as well have a piece of candy. We go to that instant gratification rather than delayed gratification, right? So if we're not clear about what we're doing, it's instant gratification. I, the way I teach this um, in all my groups is to talk about, let's say you're saving money for a house, right? Let's say... Um, you uh, let's say you, you really want to to buy a house, but you don't know how big of a house. You don't know how much money you're going to need. Um, you're not really sure where it's going to be. You haven't really picked out the location. You know, it's you just I want to save money for a house. Right. Then when you go into the store and you see a brand new handbag and these new shoes and that lights up and you go, oh, I want that. You're going to go ahead and buy the handbag and you buy the shoes. Right. Because it's not really cemented or clear what you're doing about the house. You're much more likely to buy the shoes or the handbag, whatever. If you have a clearer picture of the house, how much are you saving for? How much do you need? Where's your Delta? Um, where's it gonna be? What's the neighborhood like? Um, how, what's your timeline? If, you get, if you're very clear about this house, about this mission, about how much you're saving for the house, then when you go into the store and you see the handbag or the shoes, you are more likely to go, you know what? Yeah, I really like that handbag and those shoes, but I'm super excited about this house that I'm about to buy. And I'm going to have this delayed gratification about saving that money for the house. So the other thing that I pay attention to when someone is saying, look, I, I knew it wasn't worth it, but I did anyway, is can you get more clear about um, who you want to be in relation to food and your body and this health that you're trying to create, right? The hap I always call it your happiest and healthiest self. Are you clear about who that is, why you want it and what that means? Because when, as we get more and more clear about ourselves in that context, it becomes harder to do things that are incongruent, right? So if I'm saving for a house, I'm super clear about the house I want. When I go and buy the shoes, it's sort of like, mm, you know, that's a few hundred dollars that I could have saved and put away. And I don't really want to do that. It makes us start to feel like there's cognitive dissonance, like friction. But if we don't have that clarity, then we're not going to feel as much of that friction. Okay, that's a lot to throw at you today in your kind of Wednesday check-in on how you're doing. Um, I am looking at the live, Facebook live, and I don't think I can see any of your comments. I'm going to look one other places, one other place, <laughs> see if I can see it. Um, I can't. So if you have comments on the live, I apologize. Oh, maybe I can't see it. Okay. I don't see any comments. Oh, quiet. I'm watching myself as I'm trying to find your comments. Okay. Um, watching with you. You guys are here. Okay. Great. No comments, no questions. Um, so I think we're good. I'm able to track it here and, um, and I don't see any comments. So I hope I'm not missing any. Um, nope, we're good. Okay, you guys, uh, good to see you. Uh, tomorrow, we will continue this topic. And then Friday, we'll do kind of the weekly roundup and see how the challenge goes. And we start a new challenge on Monday. Happy Wednesday, everyone.